So the philosophy behind the, the Global Focus strategy is we like to invest in really high quality businesses, companies with a very strong competitive advantage that we think are able to kind of compound out their growth over the coming years. It tends to make them a bit more resilient to kind of market um, volatility, but also you see them kind of capture the growth that kind of is out there that they, they can find in markets. Um, in terms of adding new holdings, it tends to be a case of, um, you know, we, we're looking for companies that have that strong competitive advantage. You know, it's a constant competition for capital within the portfolio. So if we see a deteriorating competitive advantage or a change in the investment thesis or a company that just becomes too expensive, then we might sell that and replace that with kind of another stock that maybe meets with our investment criteria in our category. What we're trying to do is build the portfolio from the bottom up based on individual stocks rather than try to take a call on the macro and take a top-down view of how we put the portfolio together. So we're, we're a global fund, um, you know, kind of our global team in London, there's 13 of us, so we can't cover every company across the globe. Um, there's two and a half thousand plus in our benchmark alone, so we rely a lot on the individual regional teams that we have across Columbia Threadneedles. So it's a great source of ideas for us. But between us and those regional teams, what we're trying to do is meet management. We want to kind of spend time with them, we want to talk with them, and you know, that primary kind of source of investment research, investment kind of conversation with those managers is absolutely key for us. And as a kind of a large global organization with just under a half a trillion dollars of, uh, of assets, we have very good access to company management. And so when we see them, what we really want to understand is kind of, you know, how do they think about capital allocation? How do they think about investing in their business and driving the growth? And so we want to understand and have that confident they use, confidence they're using capital well, they're allocating it efficient, efficiently, they're investing for future growth. And just to understand about where does the competitive edge lie, what differentiates them um, from their peers. And those are the kind of the key messages we're trying to, to get out from them when we, when we speak with them. We, we also speak with their peers and we speak with the end users of their products or the suppliers to them because it builds a, a kind of a whole holistic picture that gives a better impression than simply just talking to the management. So we're a bit different maybe to some of our peers in the, the kind of um, quality growth space. Um, yeah, like them, we like technology, um, but it's about kind of where we're finding those ideas. So you know, cloud computing revenues are set to double over the next two years. So a company like um, Microsoft, which has the Azure cloud computing product, or um, Amazon, which has AWS, um, that stands to benefit significantly. It's a very difficult kind of um, industry to, to challenge and to kind of come in as a disruptor. Um, but technology covers that, it covers things through like um, Alphabet for example, right through to kind of credit card companies like MasterCard and Visa. You know, as the world starts kind of spending more online and e-commerce grows, that's great for MasterCard and Visa. But equally as more people start using their card instead of cash, that's a great opportunity for, um, for those companies. So we find a lot of innovative different types of technology companies. Um, financials is maybe a different one for, for our type of fund. Um, you know, what we're not doing is going and inve investing in developed market banks, so kind of no European banks, no US banks, um, but we quite like emerging market banks, very niche banks with a, a kind of superior competitive edge that allows them to kind of benefit from this kind of wealth creation across emerging markets. Um, and actually, we can find some really interesting ideas there. Similarly, you know, kind of the, the change in demographics across Asia, kind of so across Asia, outside Side of places like Indonesia and India, you're seeing um, uh, aging populations in the likes of kind of Hong Kong, even into China. And so, um, if you have uh, exposed to an insurance company, that's a really interesting way of capturing that type of um, type of demographic change. And we kind of balance that on the other side in the developed markets with things like exchanges, so kind of stock exchanges where very difficult business to disrupt or to challenge, or something like S and P Global, who provide the rating agents and the rating agency and the, um, the kind of the index provider. As long as you know, my peers who run a US portfolio are benchmarking to the S&P 500, that's going to be a predictable recurring revenue stream um, for them. And so that's the type of nature we're looking for. And you know, typically we tend to be overweight technology. We tend to like healthcare. Um, we like consumer staples, albeit we're underweight at the moment. And, and financials is another area we're finding some great ideas. 
from a volatility perspective, we tend to have a slightly higher beta than the market. So we're investing in growing companies, so that's perhaps kind of understandable in sectors like technology and, and, and kind of financials. Um, but the performance has been really strong, and I think 2019 has been characterized by a kind of a mix of different environments. You've had the first three months, which are the, the strongest um, first quarter for global equity markets in over a decade. Um, and you know, we've delivered significant outperformance there from some of our technology holdings, some of our names and financials. And you've seen volatility come back to markets as well, so particularly May um, and, and August. And I guess that defensive profile, even with a beta slightly higher than one, uh, the kind of predictable cash flows has seen us being a bit more resilient to that market turmoil. And so we've outperformed. So in terms of contribution, financials has been a strong contributor. Um, we've seen some, you know, kind of some success from our, our technology names, uh, and equally in, in areas such as um, such as healthcare as well. Um, so it's kind of, I guess, it's proof that we can outperform in rising markets, but also protect capital on the downside.